Uh, but this game we see in front of us is Ni Wei Ping versus Cho Hun Nun. And I thought there were there was one reason in the past I didn't share this game. Oh Yoda, not not the Jedi Master, but the Ninja. Um so there was you'll see a reason I wasn't gonna share this. But I finally realized it was a, sh a small problem, not a big problem. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons to see the game. So let's take a look. This is actually game six or seven of their seven game match. I think this is the game, yeah, seventh game. Pretty sure. Six, yeah. All, and this decided the tournament. Okay. So the first reason we want to look at this is because of this opening. Very practical territory um, based on territory. White has a few options. Anyone notice something slightly irregular about this move? Uh-huh, it's high. And why might that be considered unusual? Right. Okay, so if white plays here first, now it makes a lot of sense to have it high because it's a complete moil. But in the game, he didn't. So white is broadcast his intent for a moil. So black could, if you want, simply negate it. Now white won't get a moil. Or it'll be less of a moil or something. But black's intent has also been pro broadcasted that he wants points. So we have a very regular opening here. Now again, black could break stride and say, okay, I don't want my points, I'm going to break up your moyo. But we have a regular game here. Black has the points, white has the influence. So that's, this start is a very common start. Uh, next move is pretty obvious, up on top. White, of course, is going to play fourth line because of the moyo. Where for black? It may seem obvious, but let's discuss it anyway. M3, D18, M17, M17, that's a weird move. J17, yeah. Let's get rid of, um, let's see, let me put it there. Okay. So A, B, and C, sure, those are all reasonable, but of course, black owes a move on top. So A would be breaking, would be making a pretty good change, allowing white to create the, um, attack that stone when white already has a moyo. Okay, so let's, we'll just look at the top. The normal pattern, of course, is this way. But, two things of interest about this. Black has the intention in the future of coming in here. Well, this is more meaningful if white isn't already halfway settled in the corner. You see what I mean? Black plans this, and he can plan it because there's a weakness here, so there's something of ease to work in this area. So he doesn't want to secure White's points. Well, White doesn't want to give White any st stability here. Sorry, thinking about something. So you understand why we might not want to clear up the corner? Okay, good. Uh, next, one might think, yeah. But then white gets to kick. Now black's over concentrated. White has some profit in the corner. And this is where it gets, you know, we get some insight. Two things just happened. We could say black got over concentrated. But we could also say black got stronger to the outside and stronger to the center. 
And as people are pointing out, the corner's not cash yet. And one other thing. If white doesn't kick, then white has this option. Ooh, look at that center. White very much is looking forward to this possibility. So if he kicks, that possibility is gone. So all those facts floating together really point to J17 instead of D18. I thought that was interesting. A nice way of looking at things. Okay, and we all know where White's playing next. Where is that? Silly. Kicks are for... Kicks aren't for kids. Tricks are for kids. Ooh, kicks? Does anyone know the serial kicks? You'd have to be old to know that serial. We all know kicks is still around. Do we remember sugar-covered kicks? It was called Jets. Now that one's really going back there. Okay, anyway. So where's White's move? R14. Anyone else? White's next move? O3. Now notice B. That finishes a concept of White. That White has been even broadcast, I want this moil. Well, B supports that idea wonderfully, and that black shamari, of course, wants to extend in that direction. So B has two reasons it's unusually large. A has one reason it's commonly large, that is to say the 4-4 likes extending, and it has a reason, the right has a reason to not be played, and that's because R5 is low and settled, making it small. So the right is half big, half small, no big deal. The bottom is huge plus huge, bigger than the right. Okay. That all makes sense, right? I kind of went through it fast, but I think we're familiar with these things. Okay. Black's next choice. Where's that? Hey, Kumo? M3, yes. M3 is natural. White's threatening a lot of points. And Black already said he wants points, so if he invades, he, he removes the points and gains the points. So A is very point-oriented, right? Okay, we go through a regular... Now, we're still on track for a standard opening. There's, I figure there's a half a dozen openings in Go that we see regularly. In chess, there's countless openings. And go just a few, and this is one of them. Um, which direction does black go? Direction one or two? And hopefully, why? We have points in both directions. Someone says two for safety, connection. to remove more. So, direction two is safer, in a sense. Direction one removes more points. Interesting. Okay, let's go over a principle. Now, some people think this is, might be silly, but it does show the principle. White has two ways to go, right? Two ways to go. One is the easy way. One's the hard way. In go, we always go the easy way. So B is easier. We can't even be stopped at B. A, we can be stopped immediately. So A has more air. Here we have another two ways. We still the easy way. So that's the principle. So let's apply that to this board. Two ways to go. Which way has more room? More freedom? Direction one. Much more open space. Much less cramped. And now, to the right is less cramped. And now, to the right is less cramped. And now we can start variations. So let's check it out. If black takes 
the entire corner and settles this group. Later, White has this move. Rather big. Big territorially. Uh, presents end game so the Black's points that he gained are starting to go away. There's a move. Now, it's not that this isn't playable, but White's, yeah, White's getting these points, right? But if we go this way, later on, this might not be Sente. And we know this principle that turning in Sente is wonderful. And here, might not be Sente. We don't know. We have to wait and see, but it might not be. So, what Black did was play this way first, then connect, and he got both. Now, he lost the corner, but he messed up White's Moyo, he got the turn at H3, and he gets sent to take care of his group. Now, there are other ways of handling it that we looked at. I think one of the variations is uh, another way, but this, this is the way he chose. It seems to be the most fluid, except, of course, we lose some of the corners. Okay. So now we come to the part of the game why I didn't want to show it. Because uh, to me, it's a weird way of looking at Go that I don't think that way. And that's how does White use this massive influence. Here. Like, well, how are you supposed to find that move? Right? I mean... Now, part of the reason is we see a natural next move. So, this sequence, one, two, three, is nice and broad, fast, okay? Is it making sense? So that's one way to find it, is jump from stone one, and then jump again, and that's the starting point. Um, another is your path, this stone. You've built this line, right? That means your stone is fast. You're ahead of black. So it makes sense if you're closer to black then you're extremely thin. But here, you're a distance away from black, you're in front of black, you're making your moil. So it does make sense, but it's vague. And vague moves and go always disturb me. So that's the reason why I didn't like it. Um, maybe. Now, black, of course, is saying, well, my group's not in trouble, but my moil, uh, white's moil is getting out of hand. Now, I'm not going to ask about how to find the move. I'll tell you instead. We talked about it before. How do we invade the center? We use tools. Many of you have probably heard me use that word. Let me remove these triangles, and, and let's look at all the tools possible so that we can define what I mean by tools. We go to both places. We push that in. We should play online to find this uh -huh. Okay, let's look at all the tools. White's cut at A. That's a tool, something we can use. For instance, if, if Black wanted to come in using that tool, he might start here. You see what I'm saying? That's a that's a way in is by that tool. So, do, are you starting to understand how I'm using that term? My students understand it, but y'all, I don't know if you've heard me do it before or not. Okay. So that's one way in. Um, B is another way in. That's a tool. So black could play um, this way, threatening that cut. Maybe white feeling, what white feels the need to defend it. Here's one way. Oh, but we got a foot up. Okay, but all of these stones are kind of near, they're kind of inside white. Black chose a tool that was, wasn't so close. This one. That white stone's weak. 
so he's threatening the white stuff. Far away from all thickness, very reasonable tool. Now, he could have been more dynamic and here, but he wants to be as far in as possible. If he goes further, well, he's not applying any pressure to the stone. I mean, white can just come right after him. So anyway, that's how he chose that one. And white has a few options, like white could start settling this way or something. But white chooses just the most basic idea. Okay. White came in the middle. I'm sorry. Black came in the moil. White defended. So now black's behind enemy lines. Black runs out. That makes sense. Now, another principle is coming up. That's why I'm making the point of this one, because the next principle is coming up. White starts to split. Black's group is funny. Um, white has moves in Sente. That's building a nice wall in Sente. So black negates that. White says, now I'm behind enemy lines. Make sure black's disconnected and I can go home. So that all makes sense. <coughs> but now... White did not come after black center group. So, again, if white came this way, what would make sense to run out? See what I'm saying? If white comes after black, this is a principle that Q players miss constantly. They don't understand this. White comes after black, black defends. White doesn't come after black, ah, then black has the opportunity to continue in. See the idea? Which is also defense. It also helps the group. Okay, so I think you're getting that idea. Now, let's look at another move he considered. Because he considered uh, two moves here. Since it's the seventh game, he's in a position of not wanting to lose the game rather than wanting to win it because it's like I don't he doesn't want to risk he can risk on game one game two but not on game seven that's the one you want to play uh, seven game series so he played he says I don't want to get any roots in trouble that's why he played that but let's look at the other one if it was game one he'd probably play this way look at the territory he's getting this is consistent with what he said he wanted I'm getting my territory all these black moves are helping the black center, or in a sense threatening to help the black center, giving them a momentary home. Let's do that one more time. The black stones in the center now see a home. White says no. Black says they see a home. No. They see a home. No. They sing a home. No. Okay, end of story. Now we go in and try to live. And Cho Hun Hun's comment was, Black's original strategy was to go for points. This, and he used the word defiant. This defiant variation must be seen with trepidation, another word used, because black's in a sea of white. There's a lot of risk here. But black got a ton of points. So it's interesting. This is doable, but now you have a risk. Okay, so he went the non risk way, just to think. Okay. Where for white? G14, yes. So this is defensive for black. Big. And messing with white's thin stuff. Yeah, it's a good move. No, the other one needs to be seen with trepidation because you're stepping into trouble on purpose. But this one, no. Easy. Very safe. Yes, R9. Good one, runaway. Big move. Surrounds black. Removes black from getting that huge side. Very, very big. Now comes the first move black was dissatisfied with. He goes to settle his group. Let's watch it settle and then see why he was dissatisfied. So, so far, everything's fine. Everything's fine. White's messing with the top. Black defends and defends. Okay, so all that seems fine, but 
this sente move, or we really can't call it sente per se, but this big move is really big. So, Black's thinking, you know, I should have done this first. Then come in. Now he doesn't have that turn, that powerful turn anymore. So he wished he had pushed first to stop that sente turn. Again, it's not really sente, but it's a power play. Does that make sense? Okay, good. One yes is all I need. We saw this a moment ago. White has a cut. Sometimes we wonder, well, how do those nine dons play? What are they thinking of? I've got to cut at eight. I have a weak shape. I think I'll sit. Goes to fix. Black fixes. Black comes down. Black will live, but he's weak. So he is up to fix and finishes the group. What if white Tanuki S10? Ah, um, it's kind of worth seeing. That's back here. The trouble is, this black move is very powerful. It comes to the center rescue, it um, bothers the entire white group. It's just a, you don't let this kind of thing happen. It's, why did you bother playing there at all as white? If you're going to let this happen, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, one of those basic shapes. Okay. Over here. And black finishes the shape. Get used to finishing your shapes so that they're trustworthy. Once you have trustworthy groups like this, you can consider what cuts might happen. Um, lots of other things start to happen once you've finished your shapes. Why? Uh, don't, don't see why white has to defend at A earlier. Could have just do uh, that stone flow. I'm going to give stone flow control so he can show me what he means. Stone flow. Can you go back and show me? And it's just shake, kids. There's starving Q players in China. I like that. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's do that one. Um. Okay, white's dead in the ladder, black to play. First your black play. Take the ladder. Why? It doesn't, it's already dead. Why should we stone that's already dead? No, not to avoid complications. Okay, how's black in the upper right? Weak. What do you mean it's weak? Well, it's like running with the knight's move. We don't run with the knight's move because our group is weak. That's why we're running. And we don't want to cut. We don't want to get cut, which is what knight's moves are. Oh, but what if he can't cut right now? Well, then he'll cut later. It's the deck. That's what it is. It's the deck. Black owes a move. So, if I can get this for free. That's a huge move. An empty corner. Huge move. What's black play? This. Oh, gosh. I'd rather have the empty corner. So the weakness, Black's weakness, gave White a huge move at D4. Now this is just one little example. Wouldn't the game wouldn't look like this? But that's the thing. It's not that he can't hurt me now. It's that I'm weak, and as the game continues, I can be hurt. So let's go back to the position. And White's weak at A. So let's say White plays away. Now White's cut. Yeah. Maybe White will die. Oh, well, well then White can just save. Great, then White's cut. 
It's just weak. So that's the thing. You don't want to be weak. Even if you can't do it right now, it's still weak. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. We finish this. So we saw a moment ago that white fixes this weakness and black defends. But there's a better way. What I didn't see was I'm going to come up strength, strengthening the left side. Black comes up threatening the cut at A. I'll take a little bit of security and I'll live separately. So now I don't care if you cut me. I have two healthy groups on, I have a healthy group on each side of the cut. I don't care if you cut me. So that would have been a better way according to Cho. And the principle is sound, of course. So white plays this, which of course is not half as big as those white moves in the upper right were. This is almost zero. So the others were bigger. Okay. White turns, we looked at that. Uh, black's not, black's alive, so he's not going to save the stone right now. So, um, the next big area is on the left. He plays this, which threatens to connect under or over, you know. Nice, easy invasion. If black wasn't thick in the center, mm, this would be much too difficult. I mean, just something like um, this. You have two weak groups. But his center's thick, so I mean, you can use it as a real tool. So uh, no problem. Okay. Wipe them down. And what are the implications of this move? C2 is sente. Black corner can be squeezed. Zal Lord goes as far as to say it can die. The five don disagrees. He just says it can be squeezed. We'll see in a minute who's right. Okay, so the corner has been affected. C10. Ah. The B stone. Zal Lord says. The B stone is weak, okay? Ah, Hadlar knows the code. <laughs> uh, when you said it can be squeezed, I thought, oh, maybe Hadlar doesn't know the code there. Okay, so there's stuff around A, which we'll get to. The B stone is weak. What are the other implications here? And white C, C group is weak. So the white can't start any co or get aggressive while the C group is weak. So black has time here. He starts with the contact play. Remember, white's still thin there. So he's using white's weak position. White fixes it up, gets the base. White gets his own base. White gets out, threatening the cut. Notice how easy this was for black because black was thick and white had weaknesses. Lovely sequence. If white can fix this cut, it's sent it. Ooh. White tries to fix the cut in sente. If black says okay, then we see the code. There's the co. Now let's just play co threat. Nasty. The entire corner can just fall apart here. Nasty co. And white's really not risking. Good co. So black needs to find a way to get Sente back. So he wants some help. He doesn't need much help, just some help. Oh, Sente. 
Now he plays it back in the corner. Now he does have some thin there, and White will use that. Okay, so White pushes once, just to make sure it stays weak. Before White tries a fight here, any other issues locally? Black can cut. Mm, cuts are a little tough with uh, black being thin. Um, the A group actually isn't so great. Let's check it out. No Y there in Sente. What here? That's getting nasty. Maybe white comes down. See the white get group getting pushed on, pushed on? We like this kind of stuff. So what white does is finish the corner. We all know that C18 is a big in-game move. Plus it's white's secure life, so it doesn't even get pushed. And it's Sente against black. Now black's in danger of dying, or being pushed hard. So, black survives. Just before white took the cut, big cut there. White says, you know, you never fixed your bottom right corner. Why don't I come in there, take some profit. Black says, okay, I'll submit, gotta submit, okay. Then white takes it. Okay, are we all caught up to this point? Okay. Uh, possible black moves next. Oh, how about I take some corner? Well, I think white got the better end of that. Pretty small corner, especially considering, you know, more and more endgame. I mean, not, not much profit there. Uh, what about the other way? Now, you can play here, here. It's just, just, it's not a lot to do here. Black felt, you know, I don't really see a lot of profit there. Whatever I get, white can match it just by an invasion. He says, well, why don't I just finish off my one weakness? He plays S8. Now, I thought S8 is one of those moves that gives us insight into the mind of a professional. So let's have him pass. Look at that black group. Isn't it kind of small and worried and if it submits for life, then it has to submit again and it's got to submit again. And it's just sickly. Oh, I like that word. Thank you, Todd. Sickly. We don't want a sickly group. That's plenty of profit. Why not just take the profit at S8? Now I'm healthy and can actually fight locally. Fight comes in and takes his profit. White has plans. Black's got a bunch of cuts around A. White thinking he can cut things apart there. Hopefully cut things through at B. There's stuff going on here. So he starts here. Besides, black can make a lot of points there. So he starts Notice he's aiming at the A, aiming at the B, oh, the 1, the 2, plus he's taking the points away. And black defends this group that white is bringing into question. And it does win the game, but there's an easier way. As Cho points out. It says, see all my weaknesses, like they're marked on the board there. Black's weakness, how many cuts are we have to count the cuts? 1, Two, three, what, four? I mean, this this area is thin. He says, what I should have done is Sente. Let me put a real stone there. But Sente. Now the cuts work. And he's thickened his position. White's got to fix that. Then come in here, or maybe at A. That makes more sense. Much more secure. 
yeah, we gave fight some strength, but we were the ones who were defending. But he misses that, giving White some chances. White starts the process. Now here comes another set of principles that I thought were really shown here well. Let's say black, uh, us normal humans, amateur go players. Oh, now I'm secure. Uh, my cuts are in order. I'll even get a couple points in the center. And who cares if white gets some points on the left? Well, that's submissive and unnecessary. Just the act of being submissive and unnecessary means he's getting some sort of profit he's not he has no right to take. Do you understand this principle? If you submit when you don't need to, he's getting something that's not due him. It might only be half a point. It might be a position that's a little more a little easier. It might be a point. And at the professional level, excuse me, most notably at the nine down professional level, you lose a point you may lose the game. Very important. So Black says, I can't submit here. I need to fight it out and get every possible deal. White says, great Atari, great I'll take. White doesn't just capture the stone, White plays the bigger. We have this whole principle here. And Black now has a pretty good game. It should be a, win a one. He's figuring at this point, that should be a, a, a good 10 points ahead on the board. But White had another option. If White was thinking to himself, you know, I'm not real happy with this outcome, instead, why don't I play this fight? Oh, we don't know what's going to happen now, do we? This, uh, this is going to be full of things. We don't know what's going to happen. A better chance for winning if we don't know what's going to happen. The other way, we're starting to feel pretty secure about what's going to happen. White cut. Remember we said white was going to cut this? And it's in Sente because black's not alive yet. White messes with the shape. Black could say, you know, I'm just going to live. Great. I'll take more points than I had a right to. Nah, I can't do that. That's submissive. Got to keep fighting. Which is great. Yeah. Now if we simply submit... Oh, man. This is really getting nasty. All our weaknesses are coming into play. Well, this submission isn't going to work. He comes up with a great move I would not find on my best day. This move. That's such a cute move. I would never even think of this. I don't know if I would. So white Ataris and cuts. Black Ataris threatening the capture. Right? Threatening the capture. So white comes out and black takes. So black gave up five or six points. You know, white captured those two stones. Well, black got thickness near the wall into the center. So no submission, no loss. White starts. The second thing. Get rid of this shape. Getting ready to cut. This is a little easy on black. A little easy on black. Said white has one. Uh, Cho said white had one last chance, and that is instead of connecting here. Oh, Tawari. I see people talking. Yeah, Tawari. Instead of connecting, which seems the obvious move, but notice with the connection. See the natural flow here? White's kind of barely okay. There's a weakness here we're starting to see. Instead of this, I could play this way. Let's just cut you off. Cut you off. Now those guys, now you're all cut off, so you have to live. Great, you live. Now I'll threaten your stones, but if you save them, you don't have two eyes. So black makes the shapes. White gets some quick little profit here and there. 
and cuts the stones off. Now White's getting back in the game. But White didn't see it or didn't do it. So we get this position. And I think the reason White didn't do it, if I dare to be a mind reader, is White's going, yeah, but the group on the right, excuse me, they are three quarters dead. But here's where Cho read out, oh, but I know a way to live. <laughs> okay. Let's watch life here. Notice White's shortage of liberty problems. See, it's like everything's, yeah, connected, sort of, but a lot of little tiny problems for White. Black starts his life, and White says, ah, now that I have you surrounded, I'm going to strike and get out. You're with only one eye in the corner. But Cho had it all read out. He says, no problem. I'll threaten you, and threaten you, and threaten you, threaten you, threaten you, threaten to get out, threaten to cut you, threaten your center group, and I kill you. Now, he had to read out this kill all the way at the beginning. I would have a hard time reading out this kill here. <laughs> it would be hard for me to. Let's hold the language down, Patrick, please. Now, there's another cute thing in this, and that is that this move doesn't work. He had to go, oh, this one doesn't work. Let's watch the sequence why this one doesn't work. White plays the shortage of liberties. What's that called? Dami Zumari. Black says Atari. White threatens to connect out. Black cuts. Atari can't save. Cute little uh, shortage. So, but if you change it one move, then it works. And White resigns. I thought there were a lot of particularly interesting points in this game about not submitting. Again, professionals have to do that. You know, yeah, it's, us amateurs don't have to do that. We can, if we want to submit, we can submit, and if we lose two points, we'll get it back later. Yeah, there's a couple points in the game where the reading was important. Yeah, and I like seeing the uh, Moyo versus the territory, and how black calmly and decisively just ate it. That's pretty cool. Okay, good. As usual, I encourage you to download the game. And, um, I mean, some of you might like memorizing it. Um, and just, yeah, what resigns here, yeah. He sees it's dead. It's dead. Okay, we have about 15 minutes. I'll open a uh, board and we can do either take turns or create a game or whatever we want. Okay, see you there.